Hello and welcome back. So, last time we were talking about uh, polynomials and uh, we finished with this principle here it says that a polynomial of degree d is uniquely determined by its values at d plus 1 points. So, what exactly does this mean? So, to make this a little more precise let let f of x and g of x be polynomials of degree d and suppose you have d plus 1 distinct points ok. By points of course, we mean you know real numbers or complex numbers or whatever it is that you are plugging into the polynomial. So, let us say real numbers for our purposes. let these be distinct real numbers if so if f of xi equals g of xi for these d plus 1 distinct points you know x 1 x 2 till x d plus 1 then the polynomials f and g must actually be the same they must be equal to each other ok. So, that is what uh, this principle means when you sort of write it out in a little more detail. So, let us see how do you, you actually prove a statement like this. So, what one does in you know many such uh, things where you must prove that two objects are equal is you sort of consider that difference ok. So, let us prove this statement. So, here is a proof uh, let us define or let us consider a new polynomial called h of x which is just the difference between f and g. Now, what all do we know about h? Well, here are the various things we know. Fact 1 is the degree of the polynomial h. So, observe f and g are both degree d polynomials and when you subtract or add two degree d polynomials what you might get is well possibly something of degree d, but could also be something of strictly smaller degree than d ok. So, let us just be content with the following the degree of h is at most d is less than or equal to d that is statement 1 statement 2. is that h vanishes at these d plus 1 points <coughs> x 1 x 2 till x d plus 1 ok. Now, observe that the second statement means that these d plus 1 points are roots of this polynomial h ok. So, this sort of already violates the, the thing we, we looked at last time which is that a polynomial of degree d can have at most d distinct roots ok. So, here is a polynomial whose degree is at most d. So, it could not possibly have more than d roots ok. So, observe therefore, so if so how do we now show let us just complete the proof formally if h is not 0 if it is not the 0 polynomial then so let me just say h of x is not 0 by which I mean it is not identically the 0 polynomial then so then it has degree uh, ok. So, I should just be a little careful here. So, either since I kind of made a distinction last time. So, either h of x is 0 or it is non 0 and has degree at most d ok. So, if h of x is not 0 then uh, it is a polynomial of degree at most d with more than d roots in fact, with at least d roots because here are d plus 1 roots it could potentially have even more than that. So, it is a polynomial of degree at most d with greater than d roots and that contradicts something that we already saw ok. So, that is really the proof that a polynomial of degree d is determined once you know its values at d plus 1 points. So, this sort of suggest the natural uh, 
next question which is given prescribed values at d plus 1 points can you find explicitly a polynomial which takes certain prescribed values at those points ok. So, what I mean is uh, something like this. So, here is the interpolation question here is the problem here is the problem statement let x 1 through x d plus 1. So, what is d uh, let d be a positive or non negative integer let x 1 through x d plus 1 be distinct real numbers okay. So, those are the points at which I will prescribe some values. So, and what are those values let y 1 y 2 y d plus 1 be any real numbers I do not need them to be distinct. So, the problem is the following find a polynomial find a polynomial let us call it p of x uh, of degree at most d which has the property that that it takes the value y i at the point x i ok. So, in somewhat more graphical terms what this says is something like the following you take some distinct real numbers. So, here I have taken d equals 3. So, I have 4 numbers x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and at each of these points I prescribe some y values. So, I, I give you y 1. So, maybe that is y 1 at x 2 I give you some value y value y 2 let us say this is y 3 and x 4 I give you some y value y 4. So, I have 4 points this point is x 1 comma y 1 this is x 2 y 2 and similarly okay, x 3 y 3 x 4 y 4. So, I have 4 points a b c d and what this question really is asking here is to explicitly find the formula for a polynomial of degree at most 3 ok a cubic polynomial at most a cubic. So, I, I could potentially have a smaller degree polynomial whose graph passes through these 4 points. I am looking for a polynomial whose graph will pass through these 4 points okay. and further I am looking for a polynomial of degree at most 3 that is the other important thing ok. So, that is the interpolation question this is what is called uh, a polynomial like this is said to interpolate between these 4 points and so, observe that we already know something from this principle right here which is that if at all such a polynomial exists we do not yet know that it does, but if it does exist then it is certainly unique there cannot be two different polynomials which satisfy this property ok. And why is that because of what we just said if I have suppose I could find a polynomial p and maybe another polynomial q both of which had degree 3 and had the same values at these 4 points then according to that principle p equals q ok. So, note so here is the first thing already that so let us make some some observations on this note if such p exists it is unique such p of x exists it must be unique. why by this principle that we just talked about ok that is one. Now, let us do to get a sense of this we will just do some special cases. So, let us take let us do some special examples. So, let us take the case when d equals 1 ok in the interpolation problem what does that mean? It means that you need to find uh, what are you given firstly you are given 2 points x 1 x 2 and you are given 2 y values. So, I am given y 1 y 2. So, I have x 1 y 1 and I have x 2 y 2 and the question says can you find the polynomial whose of degree at most 1 whose graph passes through these 2 points ok. So, what do I want? I want a polynomial p of x of degree at most 1 passing through these 2 points such that p of x 1 equals y 1 
p of x 2 equals y 2. Now, observe that a polynomial of degree at most 1, well let us say a polynomial of degree 1 is just a straight line, the graph of such a polynomial is a straight line, okay. because what is a polynomial of degree 1 look like. So, p has degree 1 means p of x looks like you know let us say oh, okay, fine. So, it, it looks like this a 1 x plus a 0. Right? There is a constant term and a coefficient of x. So, the graph of such a polynomial is of course, just a straight line. So, this question really boils down to the following given two points find the, the equation of the straight line joining them. Okay? So, that is that is the interpolation question at d equal to 1 and of course, that is a you know that is a well known solution we know how to do this just using our uh, usual notions from coordinate geometry. So, let us just recall the solution to this problem. So, what is the equation of that line? Well, uh, here is one way of writing the equation of the line you say y equals. So, I am going to use what is called uh, the, the slope form of the equation of the line. So, I know the slope is y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1. So, that is the slope and so let us write it in, in slope form. It says y minus y 1 by x minus x 1 is the same as y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1. So, this is the equation of the, the straight line which passes through those two points. So, let us just simplify this a little bit. Okay? So, I am going to, to write it as follows. I am going to write it as y equals something. So, I am going to simplify this. So, I am going to get uh, y 2 minus y 1 times x minus x 1 plus uh, what do we get plus of y 1. Okay. So, I am going to rewrite this once more in the following form. I will write it as something times y 1 plus something times y 2. So, I want to do the following. I want to write it as uh, y 1 times some expression which does not have y 1 or y 2 plus y 2 times some expression. So, I am going to try and rewrite it in this form. So, let us do that. Uh, this looks like y 2 times x minus x 1 by x 2 minus x 1, x minus x 1 by x 2 minus x 1. And I have a y 1 which occurs here as well as a y 1 there. So, if you sort of see what the y 1 coefficient looks like. So, here is another way of, of rewriting the same expression. So, I have just done a little bit of manipulation you should check that this is correct. So, it is y 1 times x minus x 2 divided by x 1 minus x 2. Okay. So, that is the equation of, of the line. So, here is the here is the polynomial here is the polynomial p of x that we want. Okay. So, let us let us I mean y is just another name for the polynomial p of x. So, here is the solution to the interpolation problem at uh, for the case d equals 1. Okay, so, we are just going to do something. Uh, so, we will we'll soon see that in fact, this has a very natural generalization. So, I am going to call these two polynomials as something. So, let us call this polynomial in the first box you know which multiplies y 1 as p 1 of x and the, the thing which multiplies y 2 as p 2 of x. So, observe that p 1 and p 2 have the following property that this polynomial p 1, p 2 have well let us write down their properties they are both of degree exactly 1 have degree 1. And they have the following interesting property if you take p 1 and you evaluate it at x 1 and x 2. So, if this is p 1 if you put x 1 for x then what you get here is just 1 whereas, if you put x 2 you get a 0. Okay. So, this is what p 1 is and if you try the same thing with p 2.
it is the opposite, it is 1 on x2 and 0 on x1. Okay. So, you have these two polynomials which have you know these, these two nice properties that they are 1 and 0 on x1 and x2. Okay. So, that sort of suggests a, a general way of attacking this problem. So, let us just do interpolation in the in the general setup. So, let us just do it for any d. Okay. So, let us just try the general interpolation problem. Let us take any d positive and so what are we given? We are given those d distinct points So, what we will try and do is the following, let us try and find the polynomial which has the following property, it is 1 on exactly one of these points and 0 on all the other points. Okay. So, here is a problem, you take any, any one of these as uh, let j be any one of let it be any one of these numbers, fix any one of them and let us find a, a, a polynomial called p j such that it has the following property of degree d such that p j is 1 on x j and 0 on all the other x's. For all i between 1 and d plus 1 except for j. Okay. So, we will see in a moment why this is useful, right? but it is sort of a generalization of what we have done right there. We found a polynomial which should be 1 on exactly one of these points and 0 on all the other points. Okay, so, first let us try and, and solve this problem. How do we find a polynomial which vanishes on all the x i's other than on this single point x j. Okay. So, here is the, here's the solution. We, remember we have already done this last time. If you know a root of a polynomial, you know that x i is a root of this polynomial, then we know that this polynomial can be written as x minus x i times something. Okay. So, observe that p of x or we are calling it p j of x, since it vanishes on all the x i's, it must each of them must be a factor. So, it should look like you know for example, if j is 3, then p j of x should look like x minus x 1 should be a factor, x minus x 2 should be a factor and so on. In general, all the x minus x i's, so let us write it as product, so p j of x must certainly have all of these as factors, product of all the x minus x i's except for i equal to j. Okay. And notice that this is already of degree d. Right. So, this is already a degree d polynomial because it has exactly d factors and what I wanted is a polynomial exactly of degree d. So, I cannot really have any more factors here, what I could have is some constant in front. Okay. So, let us say p j of x might look like some constant times the product of x minus x i. Okay. So, already we are able to get quite a lot of information just by knowing that here are d roots of this polynomial. And now, to find this constant, we use this last piece of information. It says that if you plug in x equals x j, then you should get a 1 on the left hand side. So, now observe putting this uh, condition in, this gives us the value of c. Okay. What, what is the value? If you put x equals x j, the left hand side is a 1 the right hand side is a product of x j minus x i. So, the constant c must in fact be 1 over the product x j minus x i. So, this is a product over all i from 1 to d plus 1, but i is of course, not equal to j. Right? That is the choice of the constant which will make this a 1. Okay. So, 
Well, what have we done? We have at least managed to solve this problem. If you want to find the polynomial of degree d, which is 1 on a single point and 0 elsewhere, well, here is the answer. It is just product x minus x i, i goes from 1 to d plus 1 divided by product x j minus x i, product i goes from 1 to d plus 1. Okay, and observe it is a lot like what, what already worked here. right? The, so, in a sense, this is the instance of that principle for d equals 1. So, now, why is this useful? So, what is what do we have? So, we now have many polynomials. We have polynomials p 1, p 2, p d plus 1. Right? We, have, we have a formula there which works for every value of j, which has the following properties such that what do we know about them? Well, they are all of degree d, degree of p i equals d for all i. Well, by all i, I mean all i from 1 to d plus 1 and property 2, which is sort of the key property is that p i vanishes on x j. So, p i evaluated on x j will give you 0 if i is not equal to j and it will give you 1 if i equal to j. Okay? So, it is a, it has this really nice property about this. And using these polynomials p i, you can solve the general problem. So, recall what is the general interpolation problem? It says find the polynomial which takes the value y i at x i. Okay? So, here is a solution to the general interpolation problem. So, general interpolation. What I given? You are also given these, these real numbers y i. So, we are also given the values not necessarily distinct real numbers. Okay. So, what we do is define a polynomial p of x. So, let us define polynomial p of x to be well, we know all p 1 through p d plus 1, you just say it is y 1 times p 1 of x plus y 2 times p 2 of x till y d plus 1 times p d plus 1 of x. Okay. So, you combine these solutions here by multiplying them with the y i's okay. is what is often called a linear combination of the p i's. And now observe that this polynomial has all the properties that we want. So, what are the properties of p? Firstly, observe the degree of the polynomial p. So, each of the p i is of degree d and what you are doing is you are sort of taking a linear combination, you are multiplying them by various constants and adding the answer that could very well end up being a polynomial of degrees smaller than d as well. Okay? It is less than or equal to d for sure. So, that is property 1 and property 2 which is the key thing that we want the value at x i. So, if you observe what is the value when you put x equals x i, well all these terms other than the i th term will actually be a 0 when you put x equals x i. Okay? That is the key property here. Only p i of x i will contribute a 1, all the other terms will give you a 0. So, in fact, only the i th term comes up. So, this is basically a lots of zeros. The i th term contributes, it gives you y i times the value of the polynomial is 1 plus a bunch of zeros again. So, that is exactly the y i that we want it to be. Okay? So, this is precisely the, uh, the solution to the interpolation problem. Okay? So, just do an example here. Uh, suppose I want d to be 2 and I give you 3 points x 1, x 2, x 3 to be minus 1, 0 and 1 and we take some values of y, just some arbitrary values 1, 0 and 5. Like I said, they need not be distinct. Here they just turn out to be. So, here let us just you know do this do this whole thing. So, observe that the y's do not really enter the picture until the very end. So, I do not need to worry about them right now. If I know the x's, I can compute my three polynomials p 1, p 2 and p 3. So, let us calculate those three polynomials. So, p 1 of x according to this uh, prescription is it is x minus 0 into x minus 1 divided by uh, this minus 1 minus 0 into minus 1 minus 1. 
that is that is my formula for P 1. So, this is nothing but uh, if you sort of work this out it is half x into x minus 1. Similarly, P 2 of x. So, you sort of do the same thing again. So, let me just write down the answer it is uh, uh, 1 minus x square P 3 of x. Similarly, it turns out to be half x into x plus 1. Okay, in order to do this all I have done is just plug into my formula right there and the final step the, the interpolating polynomial which is the linear combination of these 3 would just be obtained by multiplying the first answer by a 1, the second answer by a 0 and the third answer by a 5. So, the interpolating polynomial p of x remember is nothing but y 1 p 1 plus y 2 p 2 y 3 p t of x. So, in this case if you sort of just work this out turns out to be 3 x squared plus 2 x. Okay. So, I am just leaving the details so something you should certainly work out for yourself and observe that this in fact does do the job. If you plug in x equal to 0 it gives you a 0, if you plug in x equals minus 1 it is 3 minus 2 which is a 1 and if you plug in x equals 1 it is 3 plus 2 which is a 5. So, this guy in fact does do the do the job and if you sort of look at the graph of this this fellow it is it is in fact, uh, some sort of parabola like this the value at uh, so at minus 1 the value is something is 1, 0 the value is 0 and at 1 the value is something. So, it is a parabola which sort of passes through these 3 points this point here the origin and this point there. Okay. But here is the general principle and so this, this procedure here that we talked about goes by a name it is called Lagrange interpolation. something that will work in complete generality no matter what your value of d is.